All right, so in this problem, I have 500 squared minus 499 squared. So I actually have two methods to solve this problem. So for method one, I'll first start by rewriting this, 500 squared minus 499 squared. And well, first off, I'm going to rewrite 500 squared. So 500 squared, this is the same thing as 499 plus 1 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 499 and b equals 1. So this turns into 499 squared plus 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. And now this is equal to 499 squared plus 998 plus 1. And remember, at the end here, I have negative 499 squared. So now we can add that back in. And 499 squared minus 499 squared, these two cancel out. So I'm left with 998 plus 1. And this is equal to 999. So that is the first method of solving this problem. Now for method 2, I'm going to rewrite our problem. 500 squared minus 499 squared. And now this time, in last time we wrote, rewrote 500 squared, right? This time I'm gonna rewrite 499 squared. So 499 squared is the same thing as 500 minus one squared. And if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 500 and b is 1. So this is going to turn into 500 squared minus 2 times 500 plus, sorry, minus 2 times 500 times 1 plus 1 squared. And this simplifies to 500 squared minus 1,000 plus 1. And now we can go back and replace 499 squared with this. So we get 500 squared minus 500 squared minus 1,000 plus one. And this is all in parentheses, by the way. So now this is equal to 500 squared and now we're going to distribute the negative sign. So if I distribute the negative sign, that's basically like multiplying these terms by negative 1. So negative 1 times 500 squared is negative 500 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1,000 is positive 1,000. And negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Now these two 500 squares cancel out. So I'll be left with 1,000 minus 1. And 1,000 minus 1 is 999. So again, I get 999 as my answer.
All right. So in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 36. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 3 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 36 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. And notice that for multiplication, I can switch the places of these two numbers. So this is the same thing as a to the power of n times n, right? Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, and this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this should equal a to the power of n to the power of n. Meaning, all four of these are equal to each other. So my point for telling you all of this is that a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So now coming back over here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 36 to the power of 3. And we can think of x to the power of 3 here as m and 3 as n. So now I can switch the places of these two. So now I get x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. And this is equal to 36 to the power of 3. Now from here, I'm going to rewrite 36 as 6 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. And again, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So this is the same thing as x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 2 times 3. And 2 times 3, that's equal to 6. So I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x to the power of 3 is equal to 6. And now if I take the cube root on both sides, I get x is equal to the cube root of 6.